commands and instructs the disciples to go out and make disciples of all nations. So I'd like actually to take a look at that scripture this morning. That will kind of be our cornerstone this morning. If you have your Bible, I'd like you to turn to Matthew 28. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see. <laughs> We're going to turn to Matthew 28, 19 um, through 20. And uh, it may come up on, yep, there it is on the screen. Perfect. So the scripture says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Those are the last words of Jesus before he ascended. And I, it's just so, it's just so um, amazing when you, when you read that, um, that that's what he wants us to do. It's very, very clear that that's what he wants us to do. If you look at the word therefore, whenever you see the word therefore in scripture, you need to go to the verse prior to that and see what it's there for. <laughs> and um, so the verse before that says, all authority in heaven, on, in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Yeah. Jesus died for humanity. Jesus died on the cross and rose again for all of humanity. He died for all of our sins, for every single person on the face of the earth, Jesus has authority over. He is the king of the universe. And so because of that authority, he um, expects us and commands us to go out and make decisions disciples of all nations. What does that look like to your life and my life? Because you may be thinking, well, am I supposed to go out to India or um, Egypt or wherever and go make disciples? Maybe. Maybe he's calling you to that. Very, very well could be. But going is actually going out in our life every day. Going out, um, first of all, starting with our family and making disciples in our family of our children. That's, that's number one in my mind. Number two, going out wherever you go out, to schools, to, to work. I mean, Discipleship in the marketplace is something I'm very passionate about because we can actually be discipling our peers, our coworkers, our bosses. We don't have to even say the name of Jesus. It's our example and how we live, living out Christ-like uh, behavior and ways and love that disciples people because we are being discipled by something. You are being discipled by something. Either you're being discipled by the culture, you're being discipled by, um, by Jesus, you're being discipled by uh, believers, but we as people are always being discipled. We're always being taught something by someone. So we can be disciple makers in the workplace, we can be disciple makers in the schools, we can be disciple makers in our, in our neighborhoods, in our families. Um, that is what the Great Commission is. And what does it mean to be commissioned? The word commission means an instruction, a command, or a duty given to a person or to a group of people. A duty given. It's our duty to go and make disciples. So I really encourage you, don't think to yourself, I don't have enough, I don't know enough. Because Jesus says, and surely I am with you to the very ends of the age. Meaning, the Holy Spirit is in you. And He will disciple people through you, through your willingness. And um, you guys, if we want to live, if we, if we as believers want to transform the culture, if we want to transform our families, transform our communities, transform our lives, we must take discipleship seriously. And today I have a very uh, lovely lady with me and talking about going and making disciples, Desiree Carnell. Hi, Heather. Hi, Thank Desiree. you. Good to have you on this morning. Yes, I'm so excited. Yes. I appreciate it. Yes. Great. You, I mean, we're going to talk a lot about your life today and your, your story of faith, yes. um, but... I know that you were huge on discipleship uh, and going. Yes. You just got back from India. I did, um, less than two weeks ago, and we participated in a CVS. Mm -hmm. It's a children's Bible school, and there were over a thousand kids in attendance each day. Wow. So um, you A thousand really, kids? A thousand kids. Oh my kids. gosh, that's amazing. It's amazing. It's a huge responsibility. You feel like, um, you know, I you want them to have the gospel. You want them to hear the message so deeply. And as you were talking about with making disciples, I'm always encouraged on the mission field um, with 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 and following. When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or yeah. superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ. I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. I love that, Desiree. What, I, what, what address is that? First that's Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through um, 3. Beautiful. And it's always, before I go on the mission field, I'm always reminded that He uses us whatever we are. Exactly. I'm not a great speaker. I get afraid. But 
if we allow the Holy Spirit to just speak through us, Amen. He uses each one of us. And that can be at the grocery store. That can be at work. Exactly. And don't you think it's so true? Because it's what we do speaks louder than what we say. You <laughs> <Absolutely>. know? <laughs> and you don't have to be perfect. It's not about being perfect. It's not about no. being uh, legalistic. No. But our love is what speaks volumes and points people to Jesus. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And I'm just so encouraged by that. Um, and your, your actions, they do speak louder than words. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know, what are you going to show? Yeah, exactly. What are you going to show today? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I know I'm, I had the opportunity. I'm so excited. I think, I can't remember the date, just sometime in June, I got asked to speak to a group of Christian women leaders in Roseville oh. at, a group, at a group called Tapestry, and they want me to speak about discipleship in the marketplace. And so I'm really excited about that because, you know, I work, uh, you work, right? Yes. And <laughs> so we you know, to have the opportunity to just be the example in the workplace yeah. and, and to realize that we are speaking through our actions at work. Yes, we are. How are we responding to conflict? How are we responding to tough situations? How are we, you know, are we walking in pride or are we walking in humility as leaders or in the workplace? Yeah. And do you show up on time? Do yeah. you show up when you say you're going to? Do yes. you do what you say you're going to do? Absolutely. Um, I get the privilege of working with my husband. Yeah. <laughs> which, which I'll know in case people don't know. Logan Logan. Logan Logan. He's a pastor <laughs> yeah. at Grace Fellowship. Yeah. And we get to work together, and I really get to see him. He has such a boldness mm -hmm. with people and his faith that I just get to kind of sit back a lot of times and watch that. Yeah. And it's really neat. He just has a way of you know, making people feel comfortable, but asking him those tough questions, and it's better. He's better at it than I am. Well, I think that's such a huge thing, asking to, asking the right questions. Yes. You know, yeah. um, I've had a person that I work with, and I just love her so much, and um, she she's come to Christ recently, but oh. it's it's um, it was just, of course, through daily prayer for her, mm. and, um, and um, asking questions when appropriate, when the yeah. Lord led, yeah. and not pushing anything on her, you know, <laughs> and just uh, loving her, <laughs> yeah. you know, that Jesus yeah. was able to speak through me yes. uh, into her life, you know? That's so, amazing. Yeah, but it, like you said, asking those questions. Yeah, you know? just being willing to have a conversation, mm -hmm. you know, with people that does talk about Jesus. Right. You know, I think a lot of times we get nervous or afraid. We're embarrassed. I'm not sure, but, yeah. I mean, if you're willing to be open to those opportunities, He's going to provide them. Exactly. Amen to and that. So I can see that you are probably very approachable well, <laughs> with your warm smile, and that really that really breaks down borders and walls. I think so. Yeah, that's so. awesome. That's awesome. And um, and then so we talked. I talked in the beginning about going and making yeah. disciples. And so some people say, well, what about the mission field right here at home? <sighs> and it's plenty. The, Absolutely. What specific? Um, What's the verse that says, uh, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few? Yes. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think the workers are few. Mm -hmm. But I, I know that we each know somebody who doesn't know Jesus. That's I mean, right. our family members, mm -hmm. our friends. Mm -hmm. So it is plentiful. And the time is short. That's right. I mean, we don't know when our time is up, whether it's the rapture or just in general. Mm -hmm. If you live 80 years, that's short in the eyes of God. Exactly. One day is like a thousand years to Him. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you just have to keep that in mind and be bold. I pray for boldness, courage, and telling others about Him. Well, and you're also a very sweet person, and you're very <laughs> humble and approachable, you. you know. Thank and you. so we don't have to, like you said, you don't have to be out there being this dynamic <laughs> Joyce Meyer speaker. <laughs> no, you know, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah, but it's just who you are. It's just who you are, yeah. you know. So exactly. that speaks volumes. Yeah, exactly. So are you, um, I know I want to find out more about, like, who you are. And, yeah. and, you know, I know that you and Logan have gone out on missions together. Yes, yeah. Um, but you also must feel a personal calling to do that, too, not just because it's with your husband, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, when we first got into it, we had this different track that we had in our minds for our life. We were going to retire at 40, work really hard, and that's our plan. Yeah. And then it, God you know, showed us that, no, this is what I have for you. And it's been so much greater than I could have imagined. Mm -hmm. And at first I just went with Logan, and then the opportunities came up to go, you know, with all women teams, which mm -hmm. has been awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sisters in Christ yeah, working exactly. together, and I love it. There's just something about that. Mm -hmm. It's such an encouraging time to mm -hmm. see other women of faith who are strong and I bold. I come back, I'm like, man, I'm excited. I'm encouraged. I want to be in, in the Word more. 
And so that's been great. And I love that, Desiree, because as sisters in Christ, yeah. you know, we are so much better together. Yes, we are. You know, and a lot of times women, even women believers, sometimes we're competing against each other yeah. instead of completing each other. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. so it's a great picture of, to see the women just banded together for Jesus, you know. I love it. Yeah, that's amazing. It is. Um, okay, good. So uh, when we get back, I want to talk to you about your call okay. and how you knew Jesus. I know you grew up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're also, you brought some pictures today. So we're going to get to see the look, uh, not the look, but I'm sorry. We get to see what it looked like for you in India. And what was the other place you went? Papua New Guinea? We go to Papua New Guinea, Haiti, yeah. uh, Malawi. Yeah, so good, good. There's a few places. Yeah. How many trips have you been on? For the last 10 years, we've gone at least twice a year. Oh, wow. We return to the same places. So. Okay, good. We're yeah. going to be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> 